All right, this example is going to be an example of both combined variation problems and also problems involving joint variation. So as you can see, we have multiple things going on here. It says the centrifugal force, uh, centrifugal force C of a body in motion uh, in a circle varies jointly with the radius of the circular path R and the body's mass M, and inversely with the square of time T it takes to move about one full circle. A six gram body moving in a circle with radius 100 centimeters at a rate of one revolution in two seconds has a centrifugal force of 6,000 dynes. So uh, some good things for you guys to look up if you're interested. Uh, these are some basic physics type problem. So uh, there's a lot of words like centrifugal force. That's different than centrifugal force. So kind of keep that in mind. You can look it up on your computer if you're interested. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to write our equation. That's the first thing. So write our equation, then find K, and then use it to help us predict in the future. So it says the centrifugal force uh, varies jointly. So joint variation, that means both of these are gonna uh, end up multiplied together in the numerator. So our radius R, and then our body's mass M. Okay, and inversely with the square of time. So we'll put T down here and square it. And then all of these problems will have, of course, a K, and that's going to be in our numerator. All right, so here's our formula. And now what we're going to do, like we said, is we're going to plug all these values in and try to come up with our K. So it says a 6-gram body. So that's going to be our mass, 6 grams. Uh, moving in a circular with a radius of 100 uh, centimeters at a rate of 1 revolution in 2 seconds. So two seconds will be our time. Has a centrifugal force of 6,000 dynes. So again, another physics word, so you can look that up. And it's something that measures force. So what we're going to try to do now is we're going to try to go ahead and uh, see if we can't simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and square this and get 4. And then I'll say, well, 4 will go to itself once. We're going to this 25 times. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to divide by those. So I'm going to divide by... If you talk about quarters, that's basically going to be 150. So when you do this, let's see, 6,000 divided by 150. So we get a value of 40. And the units, uh, you can figure out, you'd have to go through. Um, I may not waste your time at this point in time. But we get our constant to be 40. So what we're going to do now is use that K to help us predict. So we're going to come back and write our formula, R M over time squared. And again, we got our nice little value to be 40. Okay, now it says find the centrifugal force, so we're looking for C, of an 18 gram body. All right, so this time we know our mass is going to be 18 grams. Uh, moving in a circuit with a radius uh, 100 centimeters, so our radius is going to remain the same at a rate of one revolution per three seconds. All right. So again, we'll just do a little math and see if we can't figure this out. Three squared is nine. A nine will go into itself once. It'll go into 18 twice. Uh, if you multiply those things together, uh, that should be 4,000 times two will give us 8,000. And then because our units earlier was in dynes for our centrifugal force, then that answer will also be the same. So as you can see, joint variation, and this has what they call combined variation because not only did you have joint, but you also had inverse variation. So again, the three steps when you're using variation, write your formula, plug in what you know to find K, use K to help you predict in the future.